Okay guys, here we are. Course number two, day number two, Pawsburg Metro Links by B Smooth 13, I do believe. Shit, I may have to check that, eh? Yeah, B Smooth 13, Pawsburg Metro Links. So, my usual disclaimer, as always, number one, I'm playing player clubs on these instead of tour clubs, as um, the um, it is a CC design contest, so I figure the average CC player is going to be playing with player clubs over tour, so there you go. Second of all, my score is not indicative of any of the judging, or is it indicative of whether I find the course to be a CC acceptable course or not. My scoring is my scoring. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. If you watched the first episode today, uh, it was just downright shitty. It is what it is. Um, thirdly, um, if there are technical issues on a course, I will point them out as technical issues. You will find the other judges will not have um, a disagreement in those um, comments. Otherwise, most anything else I say on these threads is my opinion only. As a fellow designer, I just notice things and try to point them out that I feel may improve the playability or the um, aesthetics um, of the course, meaning the looks. Um, it doesn't mean what a person did was wrong, bad, or otherwise. It's just my take on it and observations. These are my first time playing through these courses. So um, these are generally my first impressions. I get deeper into the critiquing and judging um, as I play them more and more um, going through the rounds. So without further ado, I actually need to check and see if, um, if Mr. Smooth gave me a recommended T on this. Recommended T for contest is going to be blue and pin set one. So, alrighty. Blue and pin set one. Looks like we're already on the blue tees. We're just going to make sure. 7,000 yards and pin set one. This is going to be Pillsburg Metro Lynx. Uh, Smooth is an up-and-comer, I believe. He, um, he was in the Invicta and had a course placed in that. and We kind of did some things behind the scenes and showed him some stuff. But um, that one lacked a little of finishing the polish. So I'm curious to see what he's come out with this time. very wide open. So our 150s on our greens. Man, I hope I get to play in these winds all day. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, hopefully we get to play in all this. Need to raise your bunkers up here a little bit smooth. So you've got your bunkers back here behind this. That's good. If you do these front bunkers the same way you've done that one, that's a lot more acceptable. I get it that it's a Lynx course, but even on Lynx courses, you tend to see the bunkers. That's great. Of 
course it's going to be a fast swing. I had no doubt in my mind it was going to be a fast swing because I aimed that far left. Had no doubt in my mind. So I guess part of this is just getting mental with me now. Be careful with your sculpting back here in this area. You see how that's starting to crinkle up on you? You run that off smoother, you won't have that um, that issue. But that's something that's a little bit eye-catching when you're sitting on the green. So just be a little bit smoother in your contour from uh, the edge of your green down into your playable area right there. And you'll avoid some of that. Some of it you can't get rid of, but a lot of it you can. It's all about your transition. Same thing on your bunkers on this one. You're hiding your bunker down there. I mean, it's okay here and there. The um, You just don't want to be overly excessive with it. Let's see, we've got nothing visible off this. I like the contouring right there. I like the flow that's happening here, but you'd be a little bit better served if you would lower this part of your fairway and raise the back side of that bunker. So make the front edge of your bunkers here just about even with your fairway, that same level. And that way it's um, got a runoff standpoint and then raise the back of your bunker so they can be visible. And it solves a couple of problems. Number one, it lets the player know that they're there. So if I'm playing this TST, what am I looking at right here? I think I've got a safe shot because I don't even see the depression in the ground. A little bit there on the right hand side, but not even much. So I have no clue that that's even there. And something that is conceivably in my landing area. The second thing you do, you show your your line of sight off. You kind of break it up a little bit. So you get a much nicer look with that bunker right there of um, actually framing your your hole. But Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, and I'm doing this to kind of show off exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, if I'm a TST player, I'm in trouble now that I never even knew was there. So that's the only point that I'm trying to make off of it. Hopefully it comes across that way. Yeah, as far as the general looks, I mean, it's got a nice clean layout thus far. These are 150s. I don't have a problem with the sloping on that, just because it is there to feed your ball. And you've big enough green that it can handle it. It's not that tight up against it. You just want to be a little bit careful because you got so much slope right there and you see how this green falls off there on the left going down there anyway that even with this putt, this is not going to be as bad because it slows down. But because of the break you have coming off the front of the green, you can inadvertently make it to where shots run off, therefore limiting how a player can actually play your, um, play your hole here. You don't want to punish good shots. I don't think this one does that. Just let me clarify that. I don't think this one does that, but it's getting close to it.
Um, I haven't had anything yet scampy that I'd start playing and I'm ready to give up on it before I get a few holes into it, you know. Thus far, I think everything's been um, pretty solid. So what we got? A par three. Not a bad look to the to the hole here. I think the only thing that catches me a little bit is your um, apron area over here. It's almost a little bit too deep. It doesn't need to be that big. I realize the purpose behind it with this length that you're catching shots and giving people a playable area, but it's um, from your view right here, it's almost like it extends too far to the left. If you look at what I'm looking at here on the tee box, where your little shed is over here, that extent, does that not look really, really wide off there? Like it's distorting the hole somehow. And it's a combination, I mean, I see where the green is. It's a combination of that and how you have the sculpted down in there. So, personally smooth, I would uh, make this a little bit cleaner coming down into the green. Make this smooth. But... The, um, if you see what I'm talking about, if you just take your round soft fuzzy brush from the top right here and kind of clean that out going into your green and then same thing with this area behind um, that I'm looking at right there, just clean that up a little bit and give it a nice flow. It's still going to play the same. You're still going to get the same playability out of it. It's just going to give it a better look and probably not make it look distorted because of the ridge you have in that apron over there, it gives it almost a warped look to the green but pretty minor thing just something that kind of pops out at me The shot that I wanted to hit just went a little bit further longer than I wanted to. I thought I was going to catch that slope and what I was looking at off the tee was that slope there to the right and it um, looked like it was going to catch that and feed a little bit more but it didn't. It just kept on running out but all in all, can't complain about it. Not a bad little hole. Ah, uh, damn it. I should have had birdie right there. That lipped on me. I may have hit it just a little bit too hard, but... Uh, not a fan of this tee box only because you've killed your views off here it's a good hole in concept I really like it in concept with the um, right to left movement of the fairway same thing with the bunkers you're hitting them but with this tee box right here it's so long and flat that you've cut off the the landing area it's not even visible so I mean even with this being a long continuous tee box you either need to lower the entire thing to give you more um, visual access to your fairway here or you need to step it uh, meaning you need to start gradually working it down in things and you can have a continuous tee box that is stair stepped it doesn't have to be perfectly flat all the way across just because you chose to have it you know all together but 
if you're just gradually taking it down, you know, from these first two sets of pins to the next two, that helps a lot. But I probably would have lowered this entire tee box in general. I don't know what purpose it serves having it up that high for the well, shit. I don't think with 17 mile an hour tailwind I can hit driver off this. We're going to go three wood. I don't have a problem with being behind the hill. Now on this one, this one caught my eye on the flyover. This would probably look better. I mean, right now that that's a little bit too exaggerated. If you actually round that out and make it go around your bunker, lower it, smooth it out some, you can still have your ridge there. Still serves the same purpose, but it shelters that bunker right there. Makes it a little bit more realistic. Instead of just looking like a pile of dirt with some grass on top of it over there to the side. I'll probably be a little bit smoother with my contouring through here as well. But once again, these are all minor little things, but having worked with you a little bit before, I don't mind pointing some things out. But just making that a little bit more smooth from this hill to this hill. Just kind of let that be a little valley, man. Come off the top of that hill, smooth it from this side, let it go up. And smooth it out down here and come to a smooth transition. You still get your valley, it just doesn't stick out. Let's see if I can split those bunkers right there. Whew. It's not bad for a metro area. I mean, from this angle right here, it does look like a downtown area for a major city, so I have a problem with it. Yeah, I've seen courses in cities. Usually not right next to the downtown, but I mean, you do see them. Nope, I feel you. Your um, hill over here to the right is a little bit exaggerated. You've got good ideas with what you're going for. I like the ideas of the hills and everything else, but be careful about how you're brushing them out because it takes it from looking, um, I mean, it's kind of a similar thing we went through with Eric's course yesterday. You take it from looking realistic to almost looking fantasy-like. Um, that one's just getting excessive. A good hill is awesome, but you don't need it to be that much of a hump. And then with your sculpting, once again, you've blocked off all vision of your playable area. Fifteen mile an hour winds, 435 yard hole, goodness. Holy shit.
Well, I have yet to play anything less than 10 miles an hour thus far today. I mean, I have no choice but to leave this short. Uh, I go 225 and... I, I mean, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with it. Fully loft it up and hit it slow and just pray. And great, the the lie on that one got me. The lie on that one got me big time. Here we go, kids. Fun putt here. Birdie followed with a bogey. Well, as far as the winds, regardless of what you can replicate, if I'm going to work in certain themes, especially like highlands and tropical, I build everything with the understanding that I'm going to have winds at 15 miles an hour. I mean, it's going to happen on a tour round. You can count on it. They are two courses that are just going to have wind. Or I should say themes are gonna have wind. the distance I wanted to but damn sure not the nothing like bogey bogey Even when I'm playing to save par, I can't save par. Eh, that's a little bit overdone.
Ball did not turn at all. Ball did not turn at all. It's kind of funny. It's from left to right on my putt, but then when I stand behind it this way, nothing. Oh, one second. Most waypoint problems are caused by not knowing your distances on your clubs where they're going. So like on your tee shot, I mean, typically if you want somebody to use a driver, place it between 265 and 280 yards. If you go beyond 280, you take the risk of if the ball only goes 250 yards, it defaulting to a club to get to that 300 waypoint. Um, you alleviate that if you go about 275 to 280 because um, it'll never be an issue and if you drive past that point then you're into your your green I mean it's automatically going to face it up um, some people make the mistake because they're trying to set up camera angles so they move their waypoints around trying to make sure that the overhead camera on the flyover um, gets to certain points well okay great you got a great flyover but your gameplay now sucks ass why even mess with it uh, you can do it a little bit left to right you know, and swing it, and that's not a problem, but I tend to not worry about the um, the flyover too much. Um, I have seen that be an issue, and then on par threes, like on this one, where people make a mistake is they try to place a waypoint, like, over here somewhere, and then up there. Why? Put your waypoints, measure out from your tee box, place it right in the middle of your green, for your second waypoint or for your first waypoint and then just hit it again right on top of it problem solved your camera flies right to it and your club defaults to wherever your pin is i mean those are the typical things i don't have issues with waypoints um on ps4 or pc but the uh, son of a bitch man can, can I not get a fucking round in less than 18 mile an hour winds today? Are you for fucking serious right now? Good lord. And of course it went fast on that one. Of course it did. Same swing, folks. Same fucking swing over and over again. Fuck my life. These are 150s. All right, we're just going to run it right on past the hole. beyond caring Cool wide open hole with hidden bunkers. Come on, Smooth. Raise those up, man. Let us see them. I mean, there comes a point it even goes beyond being functional. Besides just letting the player actually know that there's a hazard somewhere. It helps the looks of your course. I mean, it really does. It's all about sight lines. Right now, all we have is a big long fairway into the buildings and while that's cool looking what you've done you got the bunkers on the side now what if your bunkers that are out there in the fairway are raised up a little bit completely different sight line right there much better cleaner looking hole 
right now TST guys that don't have the benefit of looking at this have no clue if that stuff is there. same thing I now know there's bunkers there I have no idea of the bunkers that are up there in front of the green that are very much in play I'm gonna do my best to hit one of them right here yep Yeah, the city looks really well done. It's a 449 yard hole and we've <sighs> fuck me here we go we're gonna go from perfect perfect to fast every swing now of course we're past hole number nine so I wouldn't expect anything less sure what you got away with not crazy about the bunker on the down slope of your landing area back there I made a mental note of it that's because I didn't point it out I mean I don't feel like I need to keep on saying things about bunkers at this point but You get the gist of my thoughts on the bunkers. Oh. Well, I hope not because I had a 16 mile an hour left to right wind on it. So if that left bunker comes into play for me with 16 mile an hour left to right wind, then Lord help me.
I get back to even par. I somewhat expected a fast downswing on that one, so couldn't take it as far left as I wanted to. Man, how much is that going to move me right to left before it goes back left to right? Feels like it should be right there. And it went straight left off the putt. That's awesome. Straight up. What's up, Andre? an interesting concept here. These bunkers are a lot better smooth. They really are. This is what I've been talking about the entire time. At least let me see the top of them off the, um, off the tee box right there. So those are like. And I don't mind these back here in the corner because I can at least see the ground raised. I know something's back there. So that visually, that's a lot better. Probably a little bit smoother on the sculpting over here on this side. I mean, I realize it's rugged, but some of those are a little bit herky-jerky. I like the idea behind this right there. Just that um, little cut, little mounding right there. That's kind of a cool look. Something you see on rougher courses. I'd probably raise the, um, the the bottom of my bunker, my actual surface, up just a little bit out of um, these right here because that gets really deep for a fairway bunker right there, especially this one right here. That is super deep. A little bit smoother on your sculpt going around it, but all in all, good idea. Good idea. shouldn't have lofted that with that wind in my face but any other time I've tried to play the wind like that my ball's flown so eh. one of these days I'll figure out wind in this fucking game
Hmm. Well, I'm playing even par kind of round, am I not? Same thing with your bunker here on the left. Also, know know about the uh, decision to have a coffin bunker or a church pew bunker there either, just because you've not really used that shape throughout your course. So having your rectangle there kind of breaks your flow. You've been using round shapes almost exclusively. But it is what it is. But same thing, at least take this back corner, raise it up a little bit, lower this front corner, give it a little bit of an angle. If you want to keep it deep, that's fine, but let us know it's there. I may have just found it. Wind's the only thing that saved me there. <sighs> well, it's going to have a funky little squirt on it here, isn't it? Man, I didn't think that putt was going to go in. I thought that, that break right there at the ball was going to grab it. thought it was going to grab it. Take it easy, Cole Allen. par four so I can live with front slope of that green. Man, it sucks having to kill some of my distance just to make sure I can get a damn downswing on this thing. my opinion of that ridge right there in front of a green you really want my opinion of that ridge in front of a green you really want my opinion of that ridge in front of the green That's um, kind of a consummate no-no there, smooth. You can have it sloping coming off your fairway and running downhill into the green right there. That's not a problem, but it's um, you don't want to um, build mounds, ridges right there on your green line. I mean that's kind of a kind of a no-no.
tell you what, this is going to be a fun little pin in wind. <laughs> this is going to be a fun pin in wind. That's a fun little shot right there. I don't have problems with it, with it being so short. That's perfectly fine. It makes for a fun little hole in that kind of wind right there. Pretty solid work on the retaining wall right there. So this made it look reasonably good going up against. So no complaints on that. I like how you framed your hole with your hills and everything around here. This is some pretty cool sculpting. Probably smooth out this little hump right here. It's okay to let it be like a little valley. Just make it a little bit cleaner back there. But you got the same issue going on with your tee box right here. It's so elevated that you lose your, your sight line a little bit. So don't be afraid to lower your tee box here, man. figure I could use that to my advantage. Yeah, I like that right there. Like I said, a little bit smoother on that little hill. Um, on this one right here, just that little um, area right there. Smooth that down and let it kind of like flow down your hill, and that's um, spectacular. I like that shot a lot. Ah. Oh, it's noon. My little fishies are ready for their breakfast. Nice looking hole. Go figure. Go figure. A 
very slow. Goodness. Goodness. Just trying to make sure I didn't skull the damn thing. It's some pretty severe runoff over there. Be curious to see where the pins are. See where you're gonna have one back left, front right, probably middle. A nice little runoff there to the left. And be careful. Don't make it too much. Break! Son of a bitch! Turn! <laughs> Uh, uh. Well, no doubt about it, man. You um, upped your game from your last contest course, for sure. So it's a really strong effort. A fun course to play. Um, just, I mean, some of the things I pointed out with um, your bunkering. Uh, making some of it visible and actually using it to help create sight lines and frame your course a little bit and uh, some of your tee box elevations. Other than that, everything else is pretty solid. Um, didn't find the greens too um, out of whack on anything. Um, it's pretty wide open as far as um, your tee shots. There's only one that I really felt like I was pinched on. No, two holes that felt like I was um, pinched a little bit my landing area. But... Um, one of those was a shorter hole, so I didn't care. One of them was pretty long. Um, so you want to be careful about taking drive out of somebody's hands on um, holes over 440 yards, um, especially in Highland Steam, because you don't know what wind you're going to get. It just happens to be that I was playing a 17 mile an hour headwind. So um, we see the result of what happened with it. But other than that, man, that's a good solid course right there. So I think uh, who you go up against in the first round, Andre? So it'll be a fun one to compare and contrast against. So um, tell you what, gents, uh, probably going to take me about 10 minutes. I need to get this uploaded and exported, and I need to feed my fish. Need to run the dog outside and refill my cup of coffee. And other than that, I will be back with another one in short order. So well done, smooth. So.